in my life, my brother, my sister. I never thought that I am going to preach like this. I am going to go and one day I am going to proclaim the good news. That is not my plan at all. Even Bishop said in 2017, we want to, we are observing you since you have done everything and I was elder then. I was a worship leader, then I became elder. He said, now you are eligible to be a reverend, he said. That is not my plan that I am going to go and to preach the word of God. My bishop said that you want to ordain him as a reverend and after that you, you know your calling, you know everything. But you want to ordain because bishop was doing every 10 years we do ordination. Hallelujah. So 2017 I got ordained. That also not, not my plan. I was, I, I, I don't have any plan. I don't want to preach. I don't want to sing. I was not completely, I was worldly my brother my sister. Completely worldly. I can say that I was, when I came to this country also, I was not going to, my wife told me to be, let us go to church. But some of the medical problem I have in my, in my ankle, I couldn't walk. One day the situation happened, the doctor said that, now you need to take your, your this one, the sticks, you need to walk. I couldn't walk. One day, that day God was, maybe God was waiting for the word. The one, one day, the fine day, I told God, if you heal me God. If I am limping now, if you heal me, really you are a God, people are telling that you are a healer. If you heal me, I will dedicate my life to you. Mm. That fun, fine day I had an encounter with the Lord in 2010. After that, I was slowly I came to the Lord, slowly I came to the Lord, I joined the theology. And after that, in 2013, I had an encounter with the Holy Spirit of fire. From that day, I am non-stop for the Lord. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. We give glory to God, we give honor and we give praise to Him what He has done in our lives. Hallelujah. Let us go to the Word of God because we are running out of time. Today, since I am preaching in my lecturer's church, I was thinking, so many scriptures are written now. But you know, when you use your intellectual, I want to use the Holy Spirit of God to help me to preach the Word. Not going to the worldly, not going using my intellectual how to preach. How to do? But I am saying today that God, I am asking God, God, take control of my mouth so that I speak your oracle. It will go and intercede for everyone. It will go and it will invade everyone's hearts. Hallelujah. Amen. Let us go and open our Bible. And if can anyone read, can read for me, otherwise I will read for them. Everyone here. And uh, Psalm 116. Psalm 116, one of the favorite scriptures for everyone. 12 and 30. 12 and 30. Shall I read? Hallelujah. Psalm 116, 12 and 30. What shall I render to the Lord for all his benefits toward me? I will take up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, here the David is saying that the cup of salvation. What do you mean by the cup of salvation? Let us go. When we, when we read about in a New Testament, Old Testament is a, is a salvation is always described of cup. It is always connected with the cup of salvation. When you go to the New Testament, you know that in John 4.14, when we read that the woman has an encounter with the Lord, the Samaritan woman, God said that is, that is the well, I, I have given the name, the well of salvation. When you encounter Christ, there is no limitation. Because God said that out of my belly, the living water will flow. Hallelujah. Amen. That salvation will continue in our lives. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, if you see in Old Testament, that uh, the, the, even in 23, Psalm 23, 5 says that, My cup runneth over. David, King David was writing that. My cup runneth over. Hallelujah. Amen. And when David wrote that one, he is he's talking about the salvation, about the cup of salvation. When we read the cup of salvation in New Old Testament, and when we see in the New Testament, there is a well of salvation. Hallelujah. How many people understand that? There is a cup of salvation in the Old Testament, and in the New Testament, there is a well of salvation. Now, I'm going to explain what is that and how we can approach that. Hallelujah. Now, you know that in Old Testament, there's a, there's, a, there's a offering, a drink offering. How many people know that? Drink offering. You know, for example, for example, high priest to you, high priest used to go every year in the holy suffering. Okay. He was going with the blood and he was paying the price for the sins of the Israel. Every year he used to go. I have taken that as, a, as a, he was taking a blood, a, a lamb without blemish. He was taking the blood and he was drinking the blood up on the mercy seat. By paying, the sins of the Israel people. Every year he used to go, my brother, my sister. 
Every year is to go. Because in Old Testament, we need to drag, we need to try, we need to try our level best to keep our salvation. That's why salvation is given as a cup of salvation. It's not given as a new testament. When you see the new testament, it was given as a well of salvation. There's a much comparison, there's a much difference between the old testament and the new testament. Hallelujah. Amen. How we have received the well of salvation. Amen. Amen. Now, when we go, when we go through the New Testament in a lot of what I'm saying, I'm saying about the Samaritan woman, when she had an encounter with the Lord, Lord says that when we now we go and read that John 4 28. John 4 28. Let us read that. Hallelujah. Now Jesus Christ is talking from 14 I will read, from 14 I will read. Uh, but whoever drinks of the water that shall I give, to, uh, give him will never thirst, but the water shall I, that I shall give him will become him in a fountain of water springing up into the everlasting life. Now when she heard, 28 we will see now, we will read now, 28, verse 28 here. Yeah. The woman then left her water pot, okay, went her away into the city and said to the men, come and see. Now here the woman has left her pots, my brother, my sister. We will take as a cup of salvation, for example. She has, she has left her pot when she had an encounter with the Lord. She left the pot and she went to show the well of salvation is here. Because we need to show him that we need to show that when we approach, you know, I was thinking, she was telling, I, I, I'm perceiving that you are a prophet, but she knows that. Now she said, you know, what you are waiting for, I am he, he said. But when I tell her, when I when I'm going to tell her about the living water, you will not be thirst again, that then she had an encounter with the Lord and she changed her life and she went to the city and proclaimed the good news. Wow, who, the Messiah is here. The Messiah is the well of salvation. He is the well itself, my brother, my sister. Now, I want, now when we see in the word of God, I wonder, tonight, tonight this, this, now this, this evening, we came here, we came here, you might be came with a cup of salvation, I take it, I take it, a cup of salvation, when we go to the New Testament, let us read that one. Now, how Jesus Christ changed the situation on the cross, now we will see, we will read now, Matthew 26 and 39, we read now. How Jesus changes things from the New Testament, Old Testament to the New Testament. We'll see now. In Matthew 26 and 39. Matthew 26 and 39. 26 and 39. I'll read for you. Now you know that he was in the garden of Gethsemane. Hallelujah. He went a little further, farther and fell on his face and prayed saying, Oh my father, if it is possible, let the cup pass from me. Hallelujah. Now, Jesus, how Jesus interchanged the situation. If you read that one, Jesus is telling the cup of here, Jesus is using cup as a trial for brother and sister. Now, here Jesus changes the thing. Here in the new, new Old Testament, the cup of salvation. In the New Testament, God, God is Jesus Christ is changed into cup of salvation to cup of trial. Hallelujah. Today, this this tonight, we came with the maybe we come with the cup of trials in our lives. We see our trials, we see our temptation, we see our problems as a well. But we don't, we need to know that we are already received the salvation. When you born again, when you accepted Christ, as I believe that everyone are born again here, you have received the salvation. That is the salvation of well. The living water will flow out of your belly. The rivers of living water. Whereas our trials, Jesus Christ is telling that Jesus Christ changed, interchanged the situation that cup of salvation is not the same as, as we are living tonight, today, these days. The cup of salvation, he has changed into cup of trials. Because Jesus Christ is telling in the garden of the garden, garden of Gethsemane that let your will, Lord, if it is your will, let that cup go. That means a cup is a trial. In the New Testament, cup is a trial. In the Old Testament, cup is a cup of salvation. Hallelujah. How many people are understanding yeah. what I am trying to say? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Now, we, 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 we try to, we try, we try always, we try, we try that we have a problems, we are, our focus will always upon the trials. 
Always we know what failures, what problems we are facing, what our children are facing, what we are facing in our daily life, what we are facing. We, we do and we, we magnify that thing. But God is saying that we should. You magnifying your problems, but God is saying that there is a problem in this world, but only He has given the cup of trials. God has changed into salvation. But he, whereas you see the Jesus Christ, whereas we see our, our, when we receive the salvation, that we are not having a focus upon the salvation. Whereas Jesus is telling that the salvation is in the New Testament is a well. It should never get tried. When you try, when you when you go to the when you go to the Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ says it now. You know that when we, now I'm going to go to the another scripture. I'm sure I'm going to show that the out of your belly, where is telling Jesus Christ, out of your belly. The more than well is describing the the presence of this this world where we are living right now. We focus always our trial. But God is telling that no, when you come to me, come to me, then I'll give you the rest and I will give you the living water which will flow out of your belly. Hallelujah! Yeah, yeah, yeah. Out of your belly. Now, why I am saying, I dissolve my introduction to my sermon. Dissolve my introduction. When you, even Jesus says in John 10, 10, I have, the enemy comes to steal, to destroy and kill. But I come to give you life, and life in abundance. Hallelujah! Yeah, yeah. So when you come to Christ, you will give, you will give the life to you, my brother, my sister. Now, in this world, I want to emphasize one, one thing I want to emphasize. We are we have received the salvation. Okay. How many people are there that we have received the salvation and we are having the well of salvation with us? But since we have a focus, God is trying to say that our focus is always upon the cup of trials. But we think that our trials are very heavy in this world. Very heavy. When we go while I'm going to I'm going to interpret interpret that well. When you go to the uh, Second Corinthians 14, says, what Paul says, we'll see, we'll see that. What Paul says that. Paul also describing our problems, of our world where we are living here. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a, like a cup. But we have an eternity glory. We'll go and read that one. Second Corinthians. Second Corinthians 4.17. Where our sisters was reading the scripture, the last scripture of the for our light affliction, which is but for a moment. But our affliction will think that our affliction will be forever. But we have an eternity, my brother, my sister. I'm not saying that we have a problems in this world and when you go to the when you die, you go to the eternity and you have a I agree with the scripture. At the same time, I'm going to show you that we can enjoy our salvation in this world. By living in this world, we can enjoy. So many people are not enjoying the salvation. They're, they're always putting the concentration of cup of trials. Whereas we have a salvation. So Paul is also telling, the light moment, the affliction is a very light as a cup. But when we reach the home, when we reach the heaven, you will have it. What he is telling here, Paul is telling here, exceedingly an eternity weight of glory. Now, I want to say something. Now, when everyone receives here the salvation, the well of salvation. Now in this world, in this world where we are living, when we go to the Genesis, I'm going to show you something here. When I was reading about the scriptures, everything, God showed me something here. Genesis 26. Can you open the uh, Genesis 26, chapter 26? Hallelujah. Amen. Genesis chapter 26. I'll read for you 50. And 18 also I'll read for you. Genesis 26. Chapter, 50, chapter 26 and 15. Now the Philistines has stopped up all the wells which his father's servants had dug in the days of Abraham. Hallelujah. His father. And they have filled them with earth. Now I will interpret it. I want to show you something. God was talking to me from this. Now the Abraham has dug the wells for the water. Okay. Now Philistines came here and they put Everything now when you read in a, in a 60s and and Isaac dug again the wells of the water which they had dug in the days of Abraham his father but Philistine had stopped them up after the death of Abraham and they filled now when you when you read sorry when you read 50 verse 50 when you read verse 50 now when the Philistine has stopped up the, all the wells which his father's servant had dug in the well, days of Abraham his father that they had filled them with earth. 
Now we have the we we are living in the well of salvation. That's what I'm trying to say. Now here Philistine has what they have done when Abraham dig the well. The Philistine has filled with the earth. Now here earth is a worldly thing. We think that a worldly thing. Now our wells are there. We know that our wells are there, but our concentration is not on the well. How you can say that? The Philistine is always it, it, it represents the enemy. It represents the Satan. It represents the devil. What they have done? They have filled the wells with the earth. The Philistine were earth. Now here, our Christian, our Christian people, what they are struggling, our well, we know that our well is there. We know that our salvation is there. We know that we have received Jesus Christ. Why our Christian people are suffering? Why they are broke? Why they are so poor? Because they don't have the concentration on the well. Because our wells are filled with the fornication. What whatever is happening in this world, whatever happening wherever you see, filthiness. Sin, unforgiveness, unlovingness. You have you have hated about your brother. In your church only you will hate your brother. In your you have you have a competition with the other ministers. Now you have filled your your well. God has given you the well. I am trying to say that God has given you the well, but your well has filled with that wrath, my brother, my sister. The hatred, the unforgiveness, the the the, 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 the people don't love anyone. Because they want to cover the well, but here Isaac had again what the if you read further, Isaac had dug the well again. The God Abraham has dig the well. Abraham, Isaac again again Isaac came and he has take the chunk out everything and he has he has, he has used that well again and the living water came again into the well. You take a, you you understand the word what I am saying trying to say. The revelation what God is showing me here. Our father has dug the well. Dug the well. Our forefather has dug the well. How many people are agreeing that our father means who are the ministers of God, who are came, who are given the gospel to this world, who are given gospel to the Africa, who are God given gospel to the India, who are given the gospel to the UK? They have dug the well, but because of the hatred and because of the lust of the eye, because the lust, the lust of the pride of life has filled our wells, my brother. Man. Now we need to dig the well. Amen. That is my concern. Wherever I go, I, I talk about the salvation, my brother, my sister. We need to dig our, our well of salvation so that we can enjoy the living water. What I'm trying to say, you understand what I mean? We need to enjoy because our 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 our, our wells are dig. We here say that the Philistine has covered the well with the earth. What is earth? It's a dust. It's a worldly thing, my brother, my sister. So this is what happened in our life. This is what we are happening. That is the reason we don't have the concentration. To we don't we, have, we don't enjoy the wealth of salvation. We always have a concentration of trials, temptation, and trouble, problems. Because our society, our children. Now, when the brother was talking about one testament when he was giving that money, you see wherever we see there is stabbing, more stabbing. Okay, do you know that the devil? Which is fighting? They will need the bread. How many people need? How many people? Uh, you know that what I'm talking about. The devil needs the blood of the innocent people. You know, young people. Young people are dying, starving. You know, 17 years, 16 years in this world. Why? Because there's no people to share the gospel, my brother, my sister. My concern, my 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 concern is that my my desire is that we need to share the gospel to the every people. Every people should know the Christ love. No, this this country has completely gone away, and we are praying for this country. We are, we are I know that we are interested for the country. We are we, we are interested. We have interested for the country. But I know that we are forgetting the well of salvation, and the people, our wells are filled with the earthly, earthly and worldly things in our lives. We are completely worldly, my brother, my sister. Don't take me wrong. We are completely world, and we need to go and we need to dig that well. We need to dig the well. So that the living water will come again into the well. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, when we go to the next part, what I am saying, what I was talking about, like the filthiness, the uh, the worldliness, and the hatred, unforgiveness, everything has been filled. What our fathers has dig, we need to dug that well once again Amen. with the Holy Spirit of fire. We need to dug that well, and the living water will flow as a fountain. That's what God. That's what Jesus is telling that if I tell you the truth. The living water will flow and will spring up to the eternity. Spring up to the eternity. Hallelujah. Amen. Now we go. We go to the another uh, another scripture. Now uh, Jesus has started his ministry. He started his ministry with the hunger. You know, for 40 days and 40 nights, he was fasting. 
He started his ministry with the hunger. We need the hunger of God. You know, one thing, if, if I, if one, one man was asking me, how can I, how can I passionate about God? How can the hunger can come in some, inside of me? Nobody can teach about the hunger. I can teach, I told you, I can teach about the Bible, I can talk about the songs, I can talk about the music, I can talk about everything, the scripture, what is written. But we cannot talk about, we cannot explain how to, the hunger is inside of us. We need to, we need to build our hunger inside of us. We need to go to the nook and corner of this world, this, this community, and we need to bring the people. If you have a hunger for Christ, if you have a hunger for the souls, not only souls, my brother, my sister, we are not talk, I'm not talking about the non-Christians. Non Our Christian people are not coming to the church. No more they are coming. They don't have the hunger. If, our, if we are a small congregation, if we decide, if we decide that we put our things aside and we start to seek God, and we, when we seek, when we fast, the hunger of God will come upon our lives, my brother and Jesus has started his ministry with the hunger. Why I am saying that? Because we need to bring the people to the to our churches. Because wherever we see, wherever we see, what I am talking about, wherever we see, there is the starving and people are looting, people are uh, deceiving other people because they did not heard about the gospel. Because we are not doing proper work in the vineyard, what God has called us. Now Jesus Christ, even he started his ministry with the hunger and he started, he finished his ministry with the thirst, my brother, my sister. He said on the cross, I am thirsty. And in the Matthew, even word, word of God says in Matthew 5, 6, who are blessed are those who are hunger and thirst, let them be filled. If you read the scripture, Jesus Christ is telling, he is teaching on 5, 6, when he was teaching in the Mount of uh, Olives, he was teaching, Matthew 5, 6 says that, Blessed are those who are hunger and thirst for the righteousness. Let them be filled. When we are righteous, we are filled with the Holy Spirit of God, my brother, my sister. So that we will operate with the Holy Spirit of God and we can bring the souls to the, our churches. My desire, my, my desire here, my desire and my, my passion is we need to preach the gospel to the every man and woman, every creature. We should not leave them alone because only preaching in the word of God in the churches, I agree with that. But we need to tell, we need to call them because uh, their, their wells, so many people are there. Our, our well is, 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 we are busy with the job, we are busy with the business, we are busy with the, our, 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 our affairs, we are busy everything. But we need to dig that well. When you dig the well, the Holy Spirit will come upon you and you do great and mighty things for the Lord. Hallelujah. Now, if you see, if you see Ephesians, what Paul is telling you, Ephesians <coughs> chapter 5, 18 to 19, what is telling you, let us read that one. I have, I have, I have, I have given another revelation in that, God has given me, Ephesians 5, 18 to 19, can you read for me please, if anyone is, 18, Ephesians 5, 18. You know, be drunk. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. That's it, Pastor. That's fine. So here, another verse says, do not be drunk with intoxicated drink. You know, what is intoxicating? Intoxicating, okay. Some people will say that if you drink only the intoxicate. We are we are so much consumed with the world. That is also intoxicating. Amen. When you are having a drink, my brother, my sister, pastor, when we are drinking, for example, we don't drink as Christians, we don't drink. Okay, we born again, we don't drink. But my, my, my explanation here, my explanation, my interpretation is intoxicating means you are intoxicated with your affairs, with your job, with your, with your busyness, with your children. I am not saying that, God is not saying that you don't look up to your children. But when you seek Him, He will definitely will, he will, he will, he will protect your children. But we are intoxicated so much, we are the worldly. When we are living here, I am saying, my brother, my sister, we are not in the world. Okay, we are not belong to the world. We are not belong to the world. We are not belong to this world, my brother, my sister. We are so much into intoxicating. We, we have been become not by drinking, but by, by their culture. Even the Nebuchadnezzar, when you see in the story of Rabbi Daniel, Daniel, they have changed the name of Daniel. They changed the name of uh, Shadrach, Meshach, and Abhinav. They are not given that their original name is that their original name is different. You know why? Because they were living in the time of Babylon. When they are living in the time of Babylon, the culture of Chaldeans 
they have, they have given the culture of Chaldeans to them. But since they did not change my brother, we are living in the days of Chaldeans. How many people are understand? How many people will agree with me? Are we are not living in the days of the Chaldeans? Definitely we are living as a, as a, as a culture of Chaldeans. Everywhere we see filthiness, fornication. Everywhere we, I, I don't want to take the names, I don't want to condemn, but we are living in that world. And we are intoxicated. Slowly, we are going to their, their style, what they are, the way they talk, the way they look, the way they behave with the people, the way they behave with the children. We are so much into them. But we are not belong to this world, my brother, my sister. We should be separated and the people will see our face as a radiant, my brother, my sister. When you are spent in the presence of God, when you receive the well of salvation, our face will radiant. When your face is radiant, my brother, my sister, you do not have to take much energy, you should not use any much energy, and you, you use your words and shouting. When your face is radiant, people will get attracted in the book of Isaiah says that. Book of Isaiah says that. When your face is radiant, your daughters will come. Many nations will come to you. In the book of Isaiah says that. Arrive and shine, let the light of glory come upon you. Because nations will come to you. Not you are going to the other nations. Other nations will have to come to us, my brother. Amen. When you are, you, when we have a focus on the well of salvation, when you have a focus on the well of salvation, definitely people get people will get attracted to us, and we can bring people because the people, the, these people are dying, my brother, my sister. They are going to hell. Yesterday I was crying with my my wife. I was crying when I was watching one of the uh, one of the crusades in India. What Benny Hinn has conducted with the 3.5 million people. I was crying like a baby. God, give me that passion, God. Give me the desire, Lord. I want to serve you, Lord. Because youngsters, so many youngsters are dying, Lord. They are taking drugs. They are, they are full of drinking, intoxicated. Their culture is complete. They are going to the woman. They are becoming womanizing. And they are becoming the, going to the club. But our duty, my duty, my passion, to preach the gospel to everyone. Whenever I come across any young person, Pastor, I will not leave him. Amen. I will not leave him. I will tell about the Jesus. Amen. I will talk about the Jesus. Because our, my concentration, what I am saying, I am talking to the church, I am talking to the other people. Our concentration is always upon the problem, cup of trials. But the, the, this trials is only for a moment. Amen. But we have the glory. When we leave this world, we have the glory. Not only that, God is telling that. We have to enjoy the well of salvation when we are living in Christ. We need to enjoy now. I'm not saying that when you have to enjoy, you have to die and enjoy. No. We can enjoy here by, by, by the fellowship. How we have now we are I'm enjoying the sermon process. I'm sorry, I'm enjoying the preaching. We are only few people. But I'm not looking for a hundred thousand thousand people when I'm preaching, let them say hallelujah and shouting. No. But I'm enjoying. Why? Because I'm enjoying the well of salvation. Hallelujah. Amen. I'm enjoying the rivers of the living water which is flowing and out of my belly. Amen. That should have example, my brother Masha. Now I want to go uh, to the another scripture, John 7 that is what I'm talking about. Now, here on the this is a feast of tabernacle. In John 7.37. Let us read that. Then I'll, after that I'll, I'll explain. John 7.37. I'll read for you. On the last day, the great day of the feast, Jesus stood and cried out, saying, If anyone thirsts, let him come to me and drink. He who believes in me, as the scriptures has said, out of his heart will flow rivers of the living water. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, this feast, the tabernacle of feast, is conducted by the, all the Jews were conducting. And now I want to I want to I want to explain. What happened on the day? Seven days they are waiting for the water. You know the history of the scripture. Seven days they are waiting for the water. Because they know that when they, when they were in the wilderness, they receive the water from the rock. Hallelujah. The rock is Jesus Christ. And they were expecting the same water will come again. Otherwise, on the seventh day, on the eighth day, they are praying for the, they are, they are praying for seven days. Okay, on the eighth day, they know that on these seven days the water is not coming. Eighth day, they have, they have decided that they are calling for the rain. Okay, now on the, on the eighth day, they are calling and they are praying for the rain on the feast of Tabernacle. Now on that day, Jesus Christ is standing, and people are all people are praying for the water, and he's standing, he's stretching his hand, and he's telling that whoever is thirsty, come to me. Out of his belly, the rivers of living water will flow. Now, 
what I'm talking about, the well of salvation, Jesus Christ, when you want to enjoy the living water, you need to attract it to Jesus. Now, how are you going to attract it to Jesus? Now, when, when, we, when you ask me, Pastor, how we can attract it to Jesus? Now, I, I, I believe in spirit, free food. I believe in the Holy Spirit of the nine gifts of the Holy Spirit. But when you want to, when the living water will flow out of your body, when you concentrate the fruit of the Spirit, Hallelujah. Amen. When you have the nine fruit of the Spirit, Galatians 22 says that, when you, when you, when you practice the nine fruit of the Spirit, people will get attracted to you, my brother. Amen. By your behavior, Amen. by how you, how you are forgiveness, how you have the love, how you have the patience, how you have the patience without any anxiety, how you have a, you, you, you understand? The nine fruit of the spirit. When you practice the nine fruit of the spirit, people will get attracted to you. That is the way we need to enjoy the well of salvation. Here, God has given all the, the kingdom of God. Jesus Christ, when Jesus Christ was here for 33 and a half years, he was he was talking about the kingdom of God. He was talking about the kingdom of heaven. He himself showed us how to live in this world. He did not say. He said that you have many trials in this world, but he said that you can have. It, you can live in this world and you can enjoy the life of well of salvation. You can enjoy the, your, your salvation. You can enjoy our, we, we are not enjoying your salvation. That's what, that's what I'm trying to say that in my sermon. That's why I want to conclude that we need to enjoy our salvation. Instead of putting your concentration of cup of trials, but we need to enjoy our every bit of our life. Enjoy our salvation. We are not enjoying the salvation. When you operate in the ninth fruit of the spirit, you will enjoy the salvation. Yeah. And people will get attracted to you. Because when you when you concentrate, when you practice the ninth fruit of the spirit, your face will be radiant. Yeah. And people will get attracted. Yeah. I'm not talking about a Christian. Non-believers will come to you. Yeah. Nations will come to you. Yeah. And they'll come to your church and they'll receive the Christ. How? They don't receive the they do not see the Jesus. They will see you and they say, they glorify our Lord our Savior. Hallelujah. You know, one, one of the beautiful scriptures, Pastor, one of the beautiful scriptures, when I was reading, I was really, I was, I was amazed with that scripture. Let us go and I will conclude with the scripture. Uh, 1 Peter 1 to 1. 1 Peter 1 to 1. Such an amazing scripture. I never, I was, yesterday night only I found out this one. 1 Peter 1 to 1. Hallelujah. Okay. Shall everyone has taken out here? I want to read now. To them it was revealed that not to themselves, but to us, they were ministering the things which now have been reported to you through those who have preached the gospel to you. By the Holy Spirit sent from heaven things which angels desire to do. Hallelujah. Now, how many people understand this? Now, now you see, you, when you talk about the angels, okay? You, when you talk about the, what is the meaning of the scripture? When you talk about the angels, angels, now, last, last scripture, I want to read the last one. Uh, who have preached the gospel to you by the Holy Spirit sent from heaven, things which angels desire to do, into you know that day when the day of the Pentecost when the Holy Spirit fell upon the people, even the God in Scripture says even the angels stooped down. You know one of the Greek words is that they stooped down and they felt to desire in their heart. Like, why we don't have that thing? That is the meaning of the Scripture. Even desire, even the angels are desiring that. But they, God did not give the Holy Spirit to them, my brother, mother. Today we have the well of salvation. Today we have the living water. We are so lucky, even now, we are so much blessed than the angels. That's why I'm trying to say that. Even angels were looking from the heaven when we have received the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. That is the meaning of the scripture. When you have received the Holy Spirit, even angels are getting jealous about you. Amen. Such a mighty God has no when you when you talk about when you God has given the treasures of this world. Everything God has given, the earth and fullness belongs to you. He has given everything. One day I one of the when we were talking in the one of the conversations. In one of the meetings, I told the money has created by Satan, the money and the Lord, when you see the currency. But the wealth is, belongs to God. Hallelujah. What is the wealth? What, wait, you understand what is the, what I'm trying to say that? The wealth is created by our Lord, our Savior. The wealth is, belongs to him. The, I'm not talking about the currency. There's a difference between the currency and the wealth. The rocks, the trees, and the rivers, 
everything belongs to us, my brother, my sister. Not for the enemy. It belongs to us. When the Jesus guy died on the cross, when he has resurrected on Thursday, we have received everything on that day. When you have received the Holy Spirit, everything belongs to you. Just you need to command. Lord, I need that building. That's it. The building will come to you, my brother, my sister. God has given that power in us. The living water. The power of the living water is, is, is inside of us. Just we need to, we need to put the concentration. We need to enjoy the salvation. We need to enjoy the salvation, my brother, my sister. We need to enjoy. We need to enjoy every. I'm not saying that you need to, you need to die poor. You need to be poverty. No, you need to preach the gospel and you die. No, God is saying you need to enjoy every bit of this world because this wealth belongs to us. Amen. Enemy has taken the wealth. This wealth belongs to us, not the currency. One people, one man is telling that oh, there's no now Brexit is coming. And we are going to go into the again deficits and we are going to problems everything. I told, I told. Is the is the is the wealth went to from another planet? Wealth went to another planet. No, we don't know another planet. <laughs> Still the wealth and the currency and the amount, everything is in the world, earth only. It's not going outside the earth, isn't it? So we should not I was telling about we should not go. We need to have my brother, my sister, what I'm trying to say that. God has even angels. Why angels are looking at you when you receive the Holy Spirit? I want to explain it. Just have a question when you go home tonight. When you have received the Holy Spirit, that's why they say that even the angels are stooping down and they are looking unto you. Why we are, why did not we receive it? They have received it. That means the living water is so much precious, my brother, my sister. So the living water, let the living water flow out of our building.